Aloha and welcome back to JSA TV live from PTC 23. Uh, we're here live today uh, from PTC 23. It's our final day and joining me is Sujit Panda. He is the CTIO of BDX. Sujit, welcome back to JSA TV. Thank you, Buffy. Um, and thank you for having me here. Uh, it's always been a pleasure talking to you guys. So uh, this session of PTC has been really great. Uh, I've been, I'm coming here after a span of two years, right? Uh, missed. Uh, the last one was virtual. And, uh, you know, I was then, um, unfortunately, mm -hmm. down with COVID. So it feels great to be in the place back again. It does. It feels great. I mean, this has been the biggest PTC conference yeah. uh, to date. So the floor was buzzing all week long. Absolutely. Uh, we're here at our final day. Unfortunately, we have to say uh, goodbye to the sun here in sunny Honolulu. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about BDX. So such amazing accomplishments this past year for BDX. I mean, one of the fastest growing uh, data centers across uh, the Asia Pacific region. So why don't you give us a little bit more insight into all of those accomplishments, including a massive launch into Indonesia. Yeah, uh, so we don't call ourselves a, ourselves a data center platform. We call ourselves as a digital delivery platform, right? Um, so, and what it means for us is that we look at providing the entire ecosystem to our customers, mm -hmm. and and this is something that's 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 a uh, you know, a uh, solution that we kind of package and deliver it in a manner that, you know, whether it's a hyperscaler or an enterprise, they get all of it that they need for digital transformation in one go, okay. right? So it's been great uh, as we kind of looked at the market and tried to look at how do we solve customer problems. We always look at the customer's perspective. Indonesia obviously uh, has been a great achievement uh, for the team the way we went around on the integration and getting our partnership up and running. Uh, in a record time, I think uh, it's been barely uh, six to seven months since uh, this happened. And we have already broken ground on uh, you know the new facility that we're building. There's right. a press release that we've already done with it. Um, the other piece has been that uh, we have been able to kind of you know get the standard VDX stacks implemented across the four data centers that we've taken over. Um, automation, uh, you know, if I look at the BDX platform, um, automation is the hallmark of what we do. And we've nearly reached around 80% of that in the new platforms on the new data centers that we've integrated into the platform. So it's been great here. Um, and um, you're not resting on that. Um, you're very agile. Uh, as we get uh, into the next new markets, uh, in, and we'll talk about it in the next couple of uh, weeks or so, we'll keep hearing from us. Uh, the idea is that you know the ability for BDX to get into these markets and then get our customers, uh, you know, into the same set of standardized platform experience, has been uh, the hallmark of what we have done. And this year, uh, we have actually. Uh, taken it a step further in Indonesia. Yeah. Thank you so much for being there and helping us uh, get yes. there. Yes, uh, I personally have been there uh, through it all right from the very beginning. Yes. Uh, so it's been exciting and uh, we're so happy to to have been there um, yes. with you. Uh, so you also represent uh, some other markets, right? So you have a strong presence in other markets, Singapore, mm -hmm. Hong Kong. Yeah, Singapore, China. Hong Kong, China, um, we are, uh, apart from Indonesia, we are also looking at a couple of more markets in Southeast Asia. Uh, and we're wanting to also grow beyond Southeast Asia. So there is a, um, at the end of the day, what do we want to do? You know, we've right. got these large customers and it is, it's a sense of pride that we have in terms of the way our customers are pushing us to get to the new markets, to get the same experience of the digital delivery platforms in the new market. So we will hear from us over the next, you know, um, eight to 10 weeks in terms of how we get to new markets and how our customers, you know, follow us into right. these markets. So that's that's been a great experience. And, and you know, you're always the one who know before <laughs> us in terms of what's happening. So looking forward. Yes, of course, we're looking forward to it as well. Uh, so let's talk a little bit more about another pillar 
uh, for BDX, and that is carbon reduction and sustainability. So I know that is at the heart uh, of BDX. So why don't you dive right into exactly what you're doing to uh, reduce carbon emissions and how that all ties into automation and the BDX platform as a whole. Uh, so sustainability is, um, you know, or I, I look at ESG as the central theme of what we stand for. Right. Right. Uh, the the carbon decarbonization piece is one part of it. Right. A very important part of it. We want to, um, you know, we want to kind of ensure that um, we contribute to the community. We contribute to the environment. Uh, and in terms of what we have actually done is that we have reduced about our carbon footprint by around 23 percent right uh, and look at it from a perspective that in all the markets that we operate uh, green energy is not something easy to come by right and we still have been able to reduce our carbon footprint the other thing that we've done is uh, you know we have been able to use uh, you know our own intellectual property to look at scope 3 right and get to our partners and help them decarbonize the the their own carbon footprint so and, and this collaborative approach is what we need to see in the industry uh, this is what we call as an ecosystem approach for getting each and every uh, partner who works with us to also contribute towards the decarbonization initiative and we'll see more of that coming through uh, and uh, the other piece has been that energy efficiency right um, so the energy efficiency piece if you look at it uh, you know, we operate when we when we look at uh, partnerships in new regions. When we look at adding more sites to our footprint, plugging in more partner da uh, data centers into our footprint, at that point of time, you know, we have been able to kind of go below the design PUEs, okay. and and that is uh, happening because of our automation focus uh, okay. on the focus of how we will transform energy efficiency. So that is something that. Uh, is close to our heart and we've seen that uh you know from an energy efficiency perspective in terms of you know our kilowatt hours right for the same amount of it workload um we have been able to decrease it by approximately 17 percent right and we will continue the journey going forward so that's that's going to stay with us uh you know over the next year and this 70 17 percent should you know be pushing very hard to go below uh uh, you know, sorry, beyond uh, 20%. Right. Well, that's impressive for sure. And, you know, I'm here in my green. Uh, we just launched the Greener Data Directory as part of our Greener Data Movement, which we're so honored to have uh, BDX in our Greener Data Directory and as a part of our movement. So thank you so much, Sujit, for your commitment to Greener Data. Absolutely. Uh, and for making the world truly a, a better place uh, through all these initiatives and innovations that BDX is doing. So uh, such an honor to be talking to you. Um, and as a thought leader in our industry, I mean, what trends do you see impacting APAC uh, throughout the next year? You know, um, I've always believed that uh, my colleagues in the industry, uh, our industry as a whole is, you know, a lot of the, uh, I keep hearing every market that I get to is that data centers, uh, you know, use a lot of power, right? Yeah. And yes. I believe that's a fallacy, right? You need to look at what data centers drive. They drive digital, right? right? And when you look at, uh, you know, energy efficiency, when you look at green, how are you going to deliver that without digital, right? If I take out digital, then, you know, you know I see a huge amount of, uh, you know, the carbon intensity to go up substantially. I don't know how to calculate a number, right. but, Digital is what is driving decarbonization, right? And and to say that uh, the data centers, which actually are the engines for digital, are the reasons for uh, you know power consumption is is I think it's a fallacy. You're looking at a fall guy, right? And and the industry realizes that they are not the fall guy. So that's one. The second piece is um, in terms of you know when you look at uh, you know power consumption, right? I mean. If I want to be uh, transforming a, a country, a, a region, a city, uh, a community, right, and want to digital digitize them or uh, you know look at digital transformation, you cannot do that with, without data centers. And the only way that a data center can 
become green is to get green power. Yes, we drive energy efficiency, right? We, we are doing everything within our means to become much more energy efficient, whether it is, you know, looking at automation, whether it's looking at better battery technology, whether it is using as much solar as we can use on the rooftops or any other place, whether it's looking at water usage efficiency, we're doing that, right? So I don't see the, uh, the notion that, you know, hey, you know what? I will give you a green rating, for example. That has been initiated, so I, I wouldn't say that. But by and large, the 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 public, the governments are not looking at the efforts that the industry has put up, right? So that is one piece that I'm really worried about, right? That is one trend. The second piece is, you know, what are we doing from a technology perspective? I believe sustainability and automation are going hand in hand, and I see. Uh, a lot of strides being done in terms of how AI can transform, right? And uh, we're we we putting a lot of efforts in our discussions with all the governments in all the regions that we're operating to ensure that uh, we take these AI technologies, the intellectual property that we have built and that is what we're using in our data centers and give it back to the community. So that's something that we're doing. Uh, I, I will continue seeing that happening and I'll continue seeing my peers in the industry, my friends in the industry to kind of espouse you know what I'm talking about. The third piece is edge. I think, I think edge is going to transform. Um, you know, there's been lately been a little bit of a, you know, shake up in the tech industry. Mm -hmm. We all know what's happening, right? Um, the big names have have right. actually gone through a little bit of a turbulence, but I think it is only near term, right? We were I, just talking about this the other day, right? It's going to bounce back and. Even it will stronger, bounce back. Right? Yeah. It will bounce back and will be much more stronger because digital transformation is not going to slow down. Uh, the move to the cloud is not going to slow down. Uh, the move uh, for uh, you know the uh, the AR, VR, and how do we engage? Uh, and those use cases are not going to go away. 5G is real, right? right. And and the take up mm -hmm. is going to be kind of massive in APAC, right? So I see edge will gain a lot of ground, right? Right, and I see that. Uh, you know, edge deployments to actually grow, and and there will be a, a redefinition of what we call as edge. It, it's not going to be, oh, you know what? I kind of compress a data center, and that becomes an edge. A smaller data center is an edge. That is going to change, and a lot of this uh, will get reflected in um, how the tech industry will bounce back and how the tech industry will re kind of re uh, transform itself in terms of how they want to leverage the edge. So I see that happening very very powerfully over the next you know uh, 12 to 18 months at the max yeah well thank you for those great insights sujit thank you uh we really do appreciate it is there anything else that you'd like to add today no i think um it's been a great year uh um you know i just wish all the viewers uh you know a happy chinese new year uh you know just approaching it um, and i wish all the viewers uh, to kind of participate in all the sustainable efforts that you know, as an industry, we are doing. Um, please keep giving us feedback. Keep giving us, you know, your thought processes in terms of how do we become more green, and that's about it. And follow hashtag Greener Data. Yeah. Greener Data Directory. Thank you so much, Sujit, for joining us today here uh, from PTC 23, and uh, happy networking. And thank you, viewers, again for tuning in to another fabulous episode of JSA TV Live from PTC 23. Maloha. Thank you, Buffy. Thank you for having us. This last slide here, it's a little complicated, but let me... So, who is the largest customer base, the content owners, so to speak, who are trying to reach consumers like you and I? The largest customers are the governments in a, a country. The largest customers are content owners like Google, YouTube, Amazon,
grab, for example. And what none of us like as consumers, what you and I would never like is that we are not able to search on Google, for example. Or if you're looking up something, for example, your digital records with the government, what you do not want is that you are not able to access the service. To take that problem out of the way, content owners want to have their data stored in multiple locations. It is replicated. It is the same set of data stored in three locations. And one such combination of three locations is called an availability zone. <clears throat> what is extremely exciting about this partnership is that with the three data centers that you see on the left and the fourth one on the extreme right, the existing assets which Indosat and Lintasata are operating, the three data centers on the left, the one on the right existing asset, the two that you see in the middle are the green fields that are going to be built by us, the BDX Indonesia uh, entity. With this, you not only give customers one availability zone, three different locations, but you're actually giving the customers a second availability zone and a third availability zone. Three availability zones by a single provider in a country is, of course, it's happening for the first time in Indonesia, and I can assure you it's not going to happen for a long time in Indonesia. And this has been made possible. <laughs> this has been made possible because of the partnership. So, unparalleled infrastructure for Indonesia's digital transformation journey is what BDX Indonesia promises to deliver. Thank you so much.